And let's zone in specifically on the Iliad. Why does the Iliad matter? And in what right. way is it central to the Western canon or to the great conversation of history? Yeah, well, certainly from a very kind of basic standpoint, it's almost impossible to talk about the canon without placing Homer in a, in a pretty central position there. Certainly a Western literary canon is going to make very serious mention of Homer for the simple reason, if nothing else, that Homer is really the first in many ways. He's the earliest poem that comes down to us in this intact form from classical antiquity, classical antiquity being one of the two great centers of, of the Western tradition, you know, sort of the, the Greco-Roman tradition and the Judeo-Christian tradition, which, which eventually meet. Um, that's really to beg the question, though, because you, you just have to ask again, why is it that this is the text that has been preserved over this long period of time? Why did it matter so much that it's been written down and copied again and again and again until it reaches us? Um, why not any of the other? I mean, we know there were other epics. There's a, you know, this, this, the Cypria, the epic cycle, the, all of these um, epics that, that don't come down to us in this complete form. Why this one? Um, and so your question is, is doubly apt then. I mean, my own answer is, is fairly simple, although it's not one that you might get from everyone. I actually believe that poetry and literature more broadly has a purpose and a point. Um, I believe that the purpose of it is to accomplish the communication of the human experience and that regardless of your individual preferences for this author or that, poetry can actually be evaluated on the basis of its success in that project. Um, what I mean by it is this, look, I can tell you certain facts about my day to day, like what I had for breakfast. And that's quite easy. I'm, I'm able to use normal communicative language to tell you that. What I can't tell you in quite the same kinds of words is what it was like for me to eat that breakfast, what it tasted like, how I felt when I was eating it, um, what sort of associations it, it drew up for me everything that a philosopher might call the qualia of my experience, right? The quality of what it was like to be me eating that breakfast mm -hmm. in that moment. Um, that's what poetry and literature are there to preserve and to communicate. When you hear people talk about that sort of thing in ordinary conversation, they very quickly lapse into a kind of quasi poetic speech, something like metaphor or, or imagery, right? You'll hear someone say, well, I asked this girl out and it was like my heart was pounding against the ribs of my chest and then she said yes and it was like i was floating on a cloud right that that's where we we sort of break the bonds of literal speech and move into imagery metaphor etc that's a very very small motion towards what poetry and literature aim to accomplish in full is to record some aspect of the human experience for me when a poem survives as the iliad has done and not only survives but but thrives right at the heart of a long and story tradition the chances are good that it has succeeded at doing that thing in some very basic way. That's what I think the Iliad does and why it's centrally why it's important. It communicates and preserves aspects of being a human that are urgent, chronic core to the human experience. What it's like to be at war and fear for your life. What it is like to do stupid things out of rage or love. What it's like to chased after a, a girl to the destruction of your entire city, right? These, these are things that are kind of etched into this poem and have been of huge consequence ever since they were first sung or spoken. Um, now, once you sort of make that claim, you can make a second claim, which is that you're actually, it's actually capable to progress in, in the composition of literature. It's, it's not impossible to assert a sort of upward trajectory or at least an ongoing conversation in literary history. Um, and then you can treat the Iliad as a kind of beginning of an ongoing record, which is really what it has become, you know, that ever since the Iliad was composed, it's been used as essentially the urtext, these kind of original uh, poem from which other authors will borrow and rework and interpret. And that's part of the process of this kind of literary conversation. Uh, the, the great 
uh, tragedian, the Greek dramatist Aeschylus, is rumored to have said that all of his work was like slices from the banquet of Homer. And I think that, you know, almost any great mind of, of Western literature could have said the same thing. Um, we say the same thing about Shakespeare all the sure, time. Sure, right. Well, yeah, absolutely, exactly. And Shakespeare, in many ways, fills the same role that Homer did in our culture, um, fills the same role in our culture that Homer did in, in ancient Greek culture. Um, that raises then the next kind of avenue of, of question, which is what did Homer mean to the Greeks uh, that, that they felt the need to, to preserve him and, and keep him alive? One thing that people might not immediately think about is the fact that in the way, whereas we have texts in our society like the Bible and the Torah that serve as definitive scriptural authorities within certain, you can have a religious text that was like that. There's, there's not a, a Greek scripture for ancient Greek religion. Um, and so in many ways, the Iliad and the Odyssey serve that purpose in Greek society. In addition to being these very powerful poetic texts, they're also cultural unifiers. They're memorized in school. They're cited by philosophers to prove points. They're argued over. They're, um, they're recited and, 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 you know, reinterpreted over and over again. Uh, and so that accounts for some of their centrality in the West as well, that, that these are standing at the center of what becomes one of the great original cultures of the West.